Speaking of Rishi Sunak, <laughs> let's talk about how immigration is going to bring down the Tories. Yes, um, it will do. But before we begin, if you want yep. to support us, go and sign up to our website and go watch this interview with Eric Kaufman. Nipple tassels. Who doesn't have nipple tassels, <laughs> I've heard on good authority. But he is a professor and the adjunct fellow at the Manhattan Institute and Center for Heterodox Social Science at the University of Buckingham. Right. And he deals with demographics in his career. And he is an absolute expert on the subject. It was a real pleasure to have him come in and talk to Connor about how actually we really need to start thinking about getting a handle on this immigration issue right. because it really is the only political issue that matters at the moment. Right, yep. Because if it touches everything else, it does. that's I agree. the problem. Yep, yep. Because, I mean, most of our infrastructure was built in like the 70s. Yep. And that was when the country was 55 million people. <laughs> yeah. okay, now I'm, it's somewhere north of 70. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I got kicked out of school when I was 15, so I do not understand manosphere misconception. What the hell is that? That's actually an internet. Uh, thing. Oh, okay. So don't worry, you wouldn't have learned about that in school. Okay, right. But, um, bas- basically, there's a there's a section online of uh, dispossessed men. Oh, who right. I okay. feel that they've been hard done by by society and the state. Right. Uh, when it comes to relationships, and if you look at the way that the courts deal with fathers, yes, I know. Yeah. Remember fathers for justice? I do very well. Mm. Totally legitimate. Yes. Wait, and yeah. yet the, the problem still persists. Yeah. Because for some reason, fathers actually don't deserve a fair shake in the courts for some reason. Yes, it's, 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 a, it's, yeah, it's absolutely atrocious. Yeah, yeah. And so the, 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 the manosphere is an area of the internet where people who have been hard done by by the system have coalesced and said, right, okay, it is the entire concept of dating and marriage that is the problem. And that's not the case. Right. It's the fact that it's being unevenly de- dealt with okay. you know, in society. And so this is a, a discussion to try and uh, rectify some of their misapprehensions. Right, right okay. We, we, we are obviously a very pro sort of family podcast yes we think you should get married have kids buy a house be right. happy you know right. yeah and the, the manosphere i'm i am genuinely sympathetic to how they arrived where they've arrived but i don't agree with their message right okay. right all right and so okay. that's, that's what that one's about go and watch that as well it's really good as well yeah 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 um but anyway so how do you how do you guys feel about the rwanda plan it's a sticking plaster for a for it's a massive wound <laughs> mental <laughs> yeah. strikes me as, i don't actually know that much about it apart from shipping loads of um, immigrants back to, oh, not back to, but over to Rwanda, which strikes me, have Rwanda had any say in this whatsoever? <laughs> have the immigrants had any say in this whatsoever? You know, I wouldn't think R- Rwandans have. No. The Rwandan government is obviously going to make a pile. Well, get paid. And get paid. Yeah. Well, they yeah. did get paid. And We've get, already yeah. paid them £150 million pounds right. to yeah. take a bunch of immigrants from right. us. Right? I'd not- like to go and see what sort of cars some of the politicians in yeah. Rwanda are now driving around <laughs> yeah. in. Amazingly nice ones, yes. yeah. I'm going to guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically, the Rwanda plan was a scheme that the Conservative government, government cooked up to exchange immigrants with Rwanda. So they're illegal immigrants. We would take some of them. And yes. They would take some of ours. It's like, what's, what's that going to treat? Exactly. How does yeah, that yeah. solve anything? Yeah. Yeah. We've paid £150 million pounds for the privilege. Uh, but of course, this got shot down by the Supreme Court in November. For anyone who's not aware, the Supreme Court came about in 2009. So it needs to be liquidated. It's a Blairite institution. I have T-shirts old, and I think this shirt might be old in the Supreme Court. Right? <laughs> right. And ironically, it needs to go. We don't need a Supreme Court. Uh, but of course, they shot this down because they were like, "Oh, well, they could be sent to countries where they could face harm." It's like <laughs> we're sending them to Rwanda. How much worse could it get? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so the the government has been trying to get around this. And what's interesting is the Rwanda government. Because there's been such a, an absolute catastrophe about this, the Rwandan run, run government uh, has apparently said that, uh, you know what, we're actually thinking about liquidating this agreement now that you've paid us the $150 million. Uh, It's always been important to both Rwanda and the UK that our rule of, par- rule of law partnership meets the highest standards of international law and places obligations on both the UK and Rwanda to act lawfully. Without lawful behavior by the UK, Rwanda would not be able to continue with the Migration and Economic Development Partnership. Right. So that's a fancy way of saying... Yeah, we might pull out that. Right. <laughs> you paid us 150 million. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe that's not our problem anymore. Yeah. See, uh, see you in the Cayman Island. Country decides. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah, country decides the deal is too toxic. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, the okay. UK is being called unlawful by Rwanda. Mm. Right. Right. Okay. 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 So uh, this this it's, course we're, we're just trying to play catch up here. We are the, just- the horse is so far down <laughs> the lane, and the stable door is bolted. Yeah, it's, it's just a joke. I mean, for, for anyone who doesn't know, last year the Conservatives let in 1.2 million legal immigrants, uh, and we're we're quibbling over 100,000 illegal. Immigrants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's like the Southern border in America. It's yeah. just the whole thing is uh, staggeringly inept. Yeah, 
And the Conservatives, for some reason, I mean, the Conservatives at any point, because they've got a majority in Parliament, mm. an absolute majority in Parliament, they can just go in and say, right, what legislation are they using to stay here? Repealed, 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 repealed. Just get rid of all, all this Blairite legislation. Yes. That allows them to take advantage. Like they, you, you remember when Boris was complaining about the lefty human rights lawyers? <laughs> yes. Well, repeal the law. Yeah, and yeah. that's their entire career yeah. over. Then you don't have to, but the Conservatives are not serious about solving it. No, no. Uh, anyway, so okay. in, in light of all of this, mm. The uh, conservative immigration minister resigned. I didn't realize there was an immigration minister. I assume we just had a totally open border. What was his name? Oh, Robert Jenry. Yeah, I'd never even heard mm. of him. So I was like, oh, wow, we had someone who was apparently in control of immigration. <laughs> you think the government, <laughs> just, I think the government <laughs> heard of him? Wait, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Rishi Sarek's like, who's this guy? <laughs> who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, he put out a very long statement attacking Rishi Sarek in right. the most flowery of language. Uh, but the, the important part is where he says, however, we sh- we said we would stop the boats altogether. Again, if we can't stop a couple of dinghies coming across yeah. the channel, then we've got nothing. You see how he signed it? Yours ever. Mm. That is weird, isn't it? It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. No kisses. <laughs> yeah, not even one kiss, Rob. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even think you need it. No, exactly. Um, but he says, this is what the public rightfully demands and expects from us. We, it, we must truly mean we will do whatever it takes to deliver this commitment when we say so. Again, you could have done it. All of this could have been done. You're just not prepared to do it. No, exactly. We, I think also, I just think that we've become so squeamish. Yeah. Incredibly squeamish about causing Everybody. offense to anybody. Yeah. Um, and you can see that the other day with uh, in Manchester when that guy was was arrested and the crowd got around the thing. Yes. And was, yeah. And then they let him go. Yeah. We, we have no spine yeah. in this country. And I think we, we, we've we forgotten exactly what what's important and what isn't. Well, during the Freedom March, because, what was happening, Happening because um, we chat with some friends the other day who was uh, on the freedom marches we went on and the anti lockdown marches. Yeah. Coppers were throwing people in the back of their vans, driving a few miles down the M4, and and, and kicking them out again. <laughs> and so they just had to make a had to back. do it then, yeah. yeah. But not not. But that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, look, we actually still have a navy. We are actually a naval power still, yes. even in this yes. emaciated state. <laughs> right. Like what we would what we would do is just have a boat that goes out, puts a hook. On one of the dinghies and just sails it straight back to France. Yeah, yeah. Just dump them off, and if the French are like, oh, well, that's not lawful. So, yeah, you know, it's not lawful for you to allow them to come. But you, you, the thing is now, what you'd have is you'd have so you'd have squeals of horror in the UK oh, from suffers. certain groups of people mm. who are not affected by in, in, uh, yeah, in liberal illegal. Democrat. Yeah, yeah, exactly, so they're, not also, they're not affected with, with illegal immigration. If, if well, obviously there was clearly an issue for lots of countries, why aren't the Middle East stepping up? Lots of well, wealth, they don't want them. Lots of wealthy countries there. Interestingly, I saw, um, I think it was like uh, some emir from Qatar or something like that, who was literally in, in some conference at some World Economic Forum style mm. thing. And he was just like, I'm going to say this in English because I want the English speaking world to understand. You are taking our scum, yes. our refuge. Yes, I've seen that. that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I saw it go around Twitter. Yeah. He's like, you know, and this was from like 2017, something like that. Right? Yeah. It wasn't very recent, but it, oh, was still, it still obviously applies. Yeah. He's like, you're, you're taking the people we think are bad people and we don't want in our countries. Uh, you shouldn't be taking them for your own good. I don't know why you're doing it. <laughs> right. And it's just like... <laughs> right. Okay. Out of the mouths of babes and children. Yeah. yeah. But, no, but that guy, he's yeah. not like, he's not against the West. No, no, you know, no. He's, no. He's, he's totally like, look, we, we actually don't want you to collapse. No. Stop taking our scum. Yeah, yeah, we'll put yeah. them in jail here. Did he call yeah. them scum, did he? Uh, he called them, he, I don't think it was scum. He, he, he said like refuse or trash or something. Oh, okay. okay. But he, essentially the same thing, you know. Yeah, not, like, you're not, it's not, not upbeat, was it? No, no, no. no, no. no he didn't, it's he like, no. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I thought I'd announce that we have a new line of merch. This is our aesthetics collection. So I was thinking that in the face of AI art, debasing the very concept of art, Actually, we'd do something quite positive. So we commissioned a series of paintings that were actually really beautiful and could be something that we could present outside of politics. So, for example, we have this magnificent painting of a ship weathering a storm, which I thought was just really nice. And we have, of course, a glorious sort of surrealist uh, giant white tiger drinking from a lake. But also there are other things that are just kind of interesting, such as the, uh, the chap lost in cyberspace. Or something that I thought might, in time for Christmas, make a great present to your mum or something like that. A beautiful cat lounging on some clouds. Um, Basically, we wanted to do some stuff that wasn't just political. So things that were just nice and beautiful and interesting, because that's also a part of the world we want to curate. So you can go over to shop.lodices.com. Buying the merch is a really great way of supporting us and means that we can live past demonetization. And uh, I'm sure they make great gifts to the folks as well. So Rishi Sunak uh, actually responded to this in a public letter, which 
that seems like a position of weakness to me. Yeah. Uh, he, of course, tries to big his bill up going, oh, this is the toughest piece of legal migration legislation ever put forward by UK government, which tells you everything about how soft UK governments have been mm. in quite some time. Uh, and then shortly after this, Sweller Braveman came out and gave what is being called her Rivers of Blood. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen it. It's yeah. not nearly that dramatic. It's not. Nearly, no. no. Uh, but she's obviously right on every point here. And she um, can say this because she's not in the cabinet. Yeah, exactly. What's going to fire her twice? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Um, but just as a, a, I mean, I suppose we'll play a little bit of it yeah. just because it's quite good, to be honest. To start that. Things have fallen by 30%. The number of illegal Albanian arrivals down by 90%. And we were starting to close down asylum hotels. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, crossings are down is not the same as stopping the boats. And as Home Secretary, I consistently advocated for legislative measures that would have secured the delivery of our Rwanda partnership as soon as the bill became law. Last summer, following defeat in the Court of Appeal, I advised that we should scrap rather than continue passage of the Illegal Migration Act bill in favour of a more robust <laughs> alternative that excluded international and human rights laws. When that was rejected, I urged that we needed to work up a credible plan B in the event of a Supreme Court loss. Following defeat, in the Supreme Court, the Prime Minister has finally agreed to introduce emergency legislation, and I welcome his decision. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, it is now three weeks on from that judgment, and we are yet to see a bill. <laughs> I'm told its publication is imminent, but we are running out of time. This is an emergency, and we need to see the bill now. Madam Deputy Speaker, my deeper concern, however, relates to the substance of what may be in that bill. Previous attempts have failed because they did not address the root cause of the problem. Expansive human rights laws flowing from the European Convention on Human Rights, replicated in Labour's Human Rights Act, are being interpreted elastically by courts, domestic and foreign, to literally prevent our Rwanda plan from getting off the ground. And this problem relates to so much more than just illegal arrivals. From my time as Home Secretary, I can say that the same human rights framework is producing insanities that the public would scarcely believe. Foreign terrorists we can't deport because of their human rights. Terrorists we have to let back in because of their human rights. Foreign rapists and paedophiles who should have been removed but are released back into the community only to reoffend. Yep, because of their human rights. Violent criminals pulled off deportation flights at the last minute thanks to the help of Labour MPs, free to wander the streets and commit further horrific crimes, including murder. Protesters let off the hook for tearing down statues and gluing themselves to roads. And our brave military veterans harassed through the courts some 40 years after their service. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is no secret that I support leaving the European Convention on Human Rights yeah, yeah, yeah. and replacing the Human Rights Act with a British Bill of Rights that protects the vulnerable and our national security and finishes the job of Brexit by extricating us from the foreign court and restores real parliamentary supremacy. But I accept that the... We'll leave that there because yeah. I think she's making some great points. Mm, I agree. And what uh, the Conservatives could literally do tomorrow because they have the absolute majority. Yes. At any point, they could do this. And Suella Braveman appears to be the only conservative brave enough to stand up and say, well, look, you knew this was doomed because of the ECHR laws yes. yeah. that were above you. So why do anything? Yeah. Because you knew you were going to run into that ceiling and get knocked down every single time. Yeah. And this is They really are a, a bunch of useless articles. They are, absolutely. I mean, they are, they're incompetence. And well, I mean, it's been highlighted through, uh, obviously, through COVID. 
The, the, well, the Andrew Bridgen thing uh, yeah. spoke volumes. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. I mean, the idea that you could actually have an opinion and people would, will support that opinion whether yeah. they don't, without you having to agree with it, that seemed to be gone as well. Yeah. I think the thing is, I think, I mean, I, I agree with what, a lot of what she's saying. Yeah. <clears throat> but that, for me, the bigger picture hints at something else, which is that the people in charge, a lot of those people there, have absolutely no interest in ordinary people. No. None at all. Well, well, I'm not you, know, you know what's interesting, right? You know what's interesting about this is they also have no interest in actually governing either. No. Because it's okay. one thing, if, if we were governed by a bunch of evil tyrants, at least they would have an interest in governing their own country. Yeah, right? Yeah, right. But these aren't evil, even evil tyrants. Right? These are actually just useless eaters. Who are right. Yes, are. Right? Right. You know, if they were evil tyrants, I'd be like, okay, well, at least I know who's pulling the strings. Yeah. But they're not even that. They're like, yeah. and this is the thing with like the subsidiary authority. Because Braverman ends her speech by saying, well, who actually governs the UK? Yeah. Is it Parliament? It's, it's not Parliament. No. That's the point. That's why we have basically incompetent people. Like, yes. again, if we had, like, you know, Tony Blair, as much as I dislike him, at least seemed like the guy who was pulling the strings. Right. Like, you know, he may have been an evil genius, but yeah. at least he was in charge and doing the things, you know. But this, like, when you have, like, okay, well, no, we're going we're gonna to outsource responsibility to higher and higher bodies that are further and further away. Then the people who are closest to us are just incompetent. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Just sit there getting fat on our yeah. largesse and yes, do nothing. Yeah. 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 Well, I, that, yeah. I was never a fan of Margaret Thatcher particularly, but one thing I never felt that she was working with somebody else. Exactly. I never felt that. Yeah. Exactly. I always felt she was working right or wrong, working for the country. Exactly. I, mean, um, I felt that with Tony Blair. And I felt, I, yeah, initially. I hated, I hated Tony Blair, but at least yeah. I thought he was, you know, in charge of his own mind. Yeah, I think something's <laughs> happened to him, though. Well, yeah, some, oh, death, something really yeah. bad has happened. I to mean, him. that 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 is some sort of weird possession. Isn't yeah, it, it is. Something yeah. very odd's got, <laughs> got into him. <laughs> yes, he's. He, I think he realizes how many mistakes he's made. Yeah, I'm trying to make up for it uh, in a way. Yeah. So uh, anyway, moving on with this one quickly. Uh, apparently, there have been a bunch of no confidence letters uh, that have been sent in to about Sunak recently, but I couldn't find any good reporting on this. Right, uh, I don't trust left foot forward, so I'm just going to skip over that. Okay, uh, but uh, Sunak apparently uh, has said to his MPs, "Look, back me or lose." It's like, well, yeah, back you and lose. Yeah, absolutely. You don't look at the bloody polls. <laughs> like, what well, he thinks if if they don't have him, they'll lose the election. Yeah. 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 Oh, Rishi. Yeah, Love. Just, yeah, bless. I know, just, bless. I mean, Braveman was like, "Look, you, you've got a problem with magical thinking, Rishi." Yeah, it's like, yeah, it seems that way. Yeah, it absolutely seems that way. Back me or lose. I mean, <laughs> really? Does he really? You see, I don't. I mean, he doesn't believe that. He can't. He doesn't believe that. No, he, he doesn't. can't believe. Don't that. they just read a press release and they go, "Yeah, I read that." Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. incidentally, <laughs> I watched. Wonder, uh, Cynic gave uh, this uh, press conference at eleven o'clock today. Oh, I, um, we missed it in the. Car. Yeah, no, no, I, I watched it though. Right. Um, if the he he is definitely trying to get to the point where he can do his thing. I mean, he says, we're completely disapplying all the relevant sections of the Human Rights Act. It's like, okay, well, why don't you just do what Braveman said and replace it? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could get a lawyer to write up a new thing. Yeah. And then just replace it. You could have it done by this afternoon. Yeah. You know, you literally just need one but, vote to get that But do you have to then take on, to, on board, the, then you'd have to go down the road of the believing him. Exactly. I, yeah. That's the point, you know. And the, do, would you? Yeah, I don't. Exactly. No. It could not be more crystal clear. Look, this is the problem. It's still in place. And you're like, yeah, but I'm going to do everything up until that line. It's like, okay, but why won't you go over that line? Yeah. You know, because you don't want to. That's yeah, the that's reason. Or yeah, exactly. he just doesn't have the power. Well, yeah. O other people are in his ear. And and then you get again to Braverman's point. Well, who really controls this country? Yes, it's not yeah. the supremacy of parliament. Who is it? Yeah, exactly. Um, but the thing is, when he was being questioned by the journalist, he seemed very weak and combative, as right. if he's been fought into a corner. And he was like, almost pleading with them. Right. It's like, sorry. What, on this? Yeah, yeah, on this. Oh, all right, can we see a bit? Um, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Um, it's, uh, uh, towards the end. Yeah, yeah. I can get, I can't see the bloody... That's the volume. Yeah, you, just... yeah, you were there. You were there. Go back. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Um, yeah, okay. Tr just trust me on it. He's he... generally agreed that he's a twat. Yeah, <laughs> but he came across as <laughs> very weak. And I, uh, I thought that was good, um, but uh, it's all right, John. Let's we'll go to the next one. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I just thought we'd uh, talk a little bit about what it is he's uh, in defence of. Not like for for some reason, and he knows he's been shot down by the Supreme Court, which he could dissolve. Yeah. He's been shot down by the the legislation, which he should repeal. He has got nothing done, and the Rwanda his Rwanda plan is not going to work. No. And this is what it's costing us. It's cost us three billion a year. Three billion a yeah, year to put yeah. these guys in hotels. That's a lot of money, man. Yeah, right? yeah. But the thing is, this not this is just the ones who are in hotels. Yeah. But like the problem is way worse than you think. 
So you had uh, Matt Goodwin going on GB News and saying, well, look, 50% of social housing is occupied by people who aren't British. Yeah. And of course, people go, oh, no, no, that's not true. Actually, it's only 47%. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> uh, I actually I actually went through all of the data. So you can actually go through the census data. Yeah. And so I put out just a couple of pie charts wow. based on the data. Right? Okay. So in the whole of the UK, you have about 4 million people who are on in social housing. So the right. government is paying them to live in a house. Right. Right. Of those people, 20% or eight eight 800,000 yeah. are not non-UK, uh, not born in the UK. Right. Right. And in London- That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Lot of people. Right. And in London, Ooh. it's like that. So you have about 800,000 in total. Uh, 414,000 are UK born. 376,000 are foreign born. 50-50, and, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what Matt Goodwin is talking about. Jeez. So he was he was being a little bit imprecise with what he was saying there. But basically, yes, there is a massive problem. And I, I just want to be clear. I just think the number of people on f- social housing who are foreign born should be zero. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Sorry, why, you don't come to our country and get our government to pay for your yeah. own house. Yeah. Well, 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 Especially in London. Yeah. 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 Imagine well, how London. much... Yeah, you imagine how much that's costing. Yeah, I know. I can't afford to live in London. No, exactly. No, we moved out of London for the exactly. reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I moved to Spain, I had to step up and show that I could afford that I was claiming that I am who I am. And you could afford to buy a house. Or yeah, bank house. account yeah. records, everything. And yeah. you know, and uh, and I spent a lot of money in Spain. I'd be happy. We had we had um, cleaners and yeah, and people helped out and lo- relocation agencies. And yeah. I bought I bought cars. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Spent a lot of money there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I I. And, and what I liked about it is they wanted to know, well, all right, you can come here. Yeah. What are you bringing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no. That, I think that's a legitimate question. Well, it's a bit like me getting, trying to get a job in Spain in a restaurant without any Spanish. Yes. You know, you, yes. Have, to, you have to be part of the, the, the culture community. that you're in or you leave. Yeah. yeah. It's quite simple. And it is so totally reasonable for a country to say, no, actually, we're not going to pay for you to live here. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, I I don't want the country paying for our own people to live here. No, you know, I want <laughs> yeah. them to get jobs. Yeah. You know, but let alone okay, I've just moved over and I want. I mean, again, in London of of all the places, and it things like a, a load of these are in the or not a load, but a, a percentage of these are in the city of London. It's like, have you been to the city oh, of London? Recently? Yeah, there aren't tower blocks there. No, no, like, no. there aren't flats. Where where are they living in the bloody yeah, city of London? Yeah, yeah. How much is that costing? Yeah. Like if I were to buy or rent a place in the city of London, it'd be like ten grand a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's very expensive. It is unbelievable. Very, it is. I know. I know. And so th- this is another three, three and a half billion a year that we're spending on foreign-born people. That's extraordinary yeah. amount of money. Yeah, yeah. It's staggering. Yeah. Like, because yeah. we just said they're just numbers, right? So that's three million million. Three yes. million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That, and that's this, this so much money. Yeah. You know, and then you another. Think, think of how that could be spent. We. Yeah. We work with local homeless charities, and uh, you know, trying to get any help yeah. is, is is one. Well, one local, they've had, yeah, one local charity. They applied to um, the lottery, really, yeah, for money. Yeah, yeah, can't get it from the government. Can't get it from government. Yeah, no, no. No. I mean, like that that that's all money that could be used on reducing my taxes. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> could yeah. be used on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they you know they wouldn't have to raise it in the first place. No. Or they could spend it on actual things that would be good for us, yes. rather than just yeah. housing a bunch of foreigners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it, but it, it harks back all the time to to regular people being um, shafted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. You know, they yeah. take they take all the security off stations. Yeah. They take security off yeah. the trains. Yeah. Yeah. They take security yeah. off the streets. And if you look at the state of the trains, recently, I mean, really, come on. What's, what's interesting? There's a there's a local restaurateur that we know quite well, and uh, he's he's Muslim. He came over about thirty years ago. He oh, has yeah. worked his nuts off. Exactly. He's just bought the property opposite his shop. Uh, paid, bought the whole building. Yeah. He works really, really hard, and he's angry about what's going on. Yeah. He said, I, "Yeah, I came over legally. I've worked my nuts off, and what's and I'm not being, um, I, I'm I'm not being what's the word I'm looking um, respected. Respected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I I used to I used to live above an Indian restaurant, and the guy who owned the Indian restaurant came over in like the eighties. Yeah, he was exactly the same. Yeah. He was exactly as furious. So like, look, hey, these guys are scum. B why are you giving them money? I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> right. I had to pay for this guy. Yeah, I yeah. had to work and he had yeah. a beautiful restaurant, you know, and it's yeah. like, and that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So a guy comes over, he's going to work hard. And the thing is, if we merely restricted it to the people who are prepared to work hard, yeah. then immigration is going to fall off a cliff. Yes. Because so many of these people are clearly not planning to work yeah. hard. Yeah. Well, they're, yeah. they're, they're, <laughs> we're, we're, most of our friends aren't in the music industry. They're in restaurant 
uh, hospitality yeah. or, or builders or whatever. And all those industries have a high input of immigrants and all of them have worked really hard to get where they are. Yeah, exactly. They've their own restaurants, they've got construction yeah. firms, and they begin to get pretty ticked off that they, they've they seen people just basically fast-tracked. Yeah. Because yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a Martin, who's a local um, guy that we know, who's a, a painter and decorator. Um, as, as an example of how the state treats ordinary people, uh, he his van had broken down. So he was using his car to transport all his paints and bits mm-hmm. and pieces to the next job. And the police stopped him because he didn't have a commercial license. And explain, just it's for one job. For one job. Yeah. You know, and then he opens the paper and looks at this. Yeah. And there are going to be so many people in this yeah. country who are working without licenses. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't even go with it. It's, it's, it's infuriating. Isn't it? Well, you have to have people in the house. In in, in in government who really, really give a crap about yeah. ordinary people. They, they, not, and they don't. don't. No, and so, nor does Labour. That's what's so surprising no, yeah. about uh, Andrew Bridget. What do yeah. you think of him? Yeah. He he is very um, yeah. focused on this subject. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I think more powerful. Peter McCulloch and a lot of the, Yeah, and all the other guys, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, in, I'm in a uh, oh, politician. Yeah, you're a politician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, and just to be clear, there's no way in hell we're going to be endorsing Labour. Oh, um, they, that's they're, be... they're the architects of all of these problems, <laughs> exactly. and they're just going to make them worse. Exactly. Also, Keir Starmer. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you don't even know what a woman is. No, no. Stupid man. No. Hey, hey, hey. You know who's what 99% of women are? It's that 1% of her penises he's a bit confused about. <laughs> he's a bit confused yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God, what in the I state? Know. The state of our country. I know. Um, it, it wasn't always like this as well. That's the thing. A lot of the young people these days, they don't realize that the country wasn't always shit. No, it no. wasn't. And also, we used to have, there were politicians, I didn't agree with John Smith, but he was a serious politician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't oh, agree yeah. with Dennis Healy, but he was a serious politician. Yes. All these people were serious people, you know. Back serious. in the day, they used to resign if yeah. it wasn't that, like Robin Cook. Or, yeah. Or was it Robin Cook? Robin Cook, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, they resigned on principle. Yeah. yeah. And I remember well, that. When, where's that? Yeah, at? and I remember um, they were talking about Peter, Sh- Peter Shaw's wife was talking after he died. And she said in the house, he was probably the only one who had actually read the Treaty of Rome. <laughs> really? Yeah. She said, our flat was just littered. You couldn't yeah. see the he carpet. Hard, yeah, yeah. Now, there's a, now, whatever yeah. you think, if you don't, there are bit bar, parts from that I agree with and parts from that I don't. But whatever you think, he was a, a, a thinking politician mm. who was committed to Imagine looking you, after the British If people. you could put some of those people in the room with each other, yeah. the mincemeat Tony Benn would make of Starmer. Yeah, exactly. Or Peter Shaw would. Mm. Or Harold Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Or... Um, you know, even that Margaret Thatcher, whatever you think of these people, they could they could stand their ground. Yeah, and this, uh, this, I, I made this point a while ago because that you can literally just go on YouTube and watch old interviews from like the sixties, seventies, and eighties, and listen to the politicians talking. And it wasn't just the rote propaganda. Exactly. That wasn't no. no, they would thoughtfully answer questions. Yeah. Like, look, we had a higher caliber of politicians yeah. Yeah. 30, 40 years ago, and we have declined. Oh, it's dreadful. It's palpable. Yeah, yeah it is. Feel the yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. Exemplified with uh, D- D- um, Diane Abbott. Yes, <laughs> I thought when they were when they do that that sketch on uh, Countdown, it was Diane Abbott doing the math. <laughs> it was, it was just, <laughs> oh, you've got to laugh! I tell you, I just can't believe Diane Abbott was actually pictured in public with two left shoes on. Yes, so she was. Yes, she ha- wasn't. She was. Yes, yes I'm not was. even joking. No, no, some time ago, yeah. Two left shoes. I've never seen that. I'm not even joking. I'm just like, how does that happen? <laughs> no. Yeah. How do you end up? That's got to be photocopied. Uh, it's well, not. Photocopy. I swear to God, it's not. <laughs> Seriously. I'm yeah. not even joking. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, you can, I'm not good at maths either, <laughs> but I can at least get the right shoes on in the morning. <laughs> you have a knickers on that side of the dress. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. Lord. Hackney Abbott there for you, folks. Oh, Lord. Anyway. Uh, yeah, h- here we go. Like, just. <laughs> I mean, but like, it's one thing having mismatched shoes, but it'd be a right and a left. Look, look. But, but and ironically, two left shoes. <laughs> oh, bless her. Good. Bless her. But we've got <laughs> close. Not the same shoe, are they? And they're not the same shoe. They're not the same shoe, but they're both left. <laughs> oh, God, Lord. That's how left wing Diane Abbott is. She refuses to wear a right, <laughs> right shoe. <laughs> They're different oh, shoes bless. completely, look. Which I'd understand if it was like a right shoe and a left shoe. Yes, two yes. different shoes. Okay, fair enough. You yes. know, I've not done it myself. I've done that with trainers. I could understand. I haven't done it. I've got black trainers yeah. that are really similar. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Easy enough mistake to make. But two left ones, Diane, honestly. Anyway. Poor thing. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium contents on the site, such as the Lads Hour. This one on Is the Right Getting Any Wins? If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye. Mm-hmm.